Question 13, part A. The diagram shows a triangle ABC. The line 2x plus y equals 8 meets the x and y axes at the points A and B respectively. The point C has coordinates 7, 4. Part 1. Calculate the distance AB. The line through the points A and B forms a right angle triangle with the x-axis and the y-axis. So we need the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the line 2x plus y equals 8. And then we can use Pythagoras theorem to find the length AB. Now point A, that's this point here, corresponds to the x-intercept of the line 2x plus y equals 8. So to find the x-intercept, we let y equal 0, since the y-coordinate of point A is 0. So 2x plus 0 equals 8 which gives us x equals 4 as a solution. Now the point B, this point here, corresponds to the y-intercept of the line 2x plus y equals 8. So to find the y-intercept, we let x equal 0, since the x-coordinate of point B is equal to 0. So 2 times 0 plus y equals 8, so y is equal to 8. So the base of the right angle triangle is 4 units, the height of the right angle triangle is 8 units, so using Pythagoras theorem, the hypotenuse, AB squared is equal to 4 squared plus 8 squared, so AB squared is equal to 80. Therefore, AB is equal to the square root of 80, or 4 root 5 units when simplified. Part 2. It is known that AC equals 5 and BC equals the square root of 65. Do not prove this. Calculate the size of angle ABC to the nearest degree. Triangle ABC is a non-right angle triangle and we have three known sides and the question is asking for the size of angle ABC, which I've marked here with angle theta, correct to the nearest degree. So the cosine rule will need to be used and we can rearrange the cosine rule to make cos theta the subject and then we can proceed to find the size of angle theta by using the inverse cos function. Let angle ABC equal theta, that's this angle here. So AC squared is equal to AB squared plus BC squared minus 2 times AB times BC times cos theta. Now we have the value of AC squared, so that's 5 squared which is 25 is equal to AB squared which is 80 plus BC squared which is 65 minus 2 times 4 root 5 times the square root of 65 times cos theta. Now we can simplify this equation a little, so 80 plus 65 is 145, and we can multiply the two, the 4 root 5 and the root 65 together, and we get minus 8 root 325. So the equation simplifies to 25 equals 145 minus 8 root 325 times cos theta. Now we can subtract 145 from both sides of the equation, so we get negative 120 is equal to negative 8 root 325 times cos theta. Then dividing both sides of the equation by negative 8, we get 15 is equal to root 325 times cos theta. Now rearranging this equation to make cos theta the subject, we get cos theta is equal to 15 divided by root 325. And then taking the inverse cos of both sides to make theta the subject, we get theta is equal to inverse cos of 15 divided by root 325, which equals 33.6900 and so on degrees, which rounds to 34 degrees. Therefore, angle ABC equals 34 degrees, correct to the nearest degree. Part 3. The point N lies on AB such that CN is perpendicular to AB. Find the coordinates of N. To find the coordinates of point N, given that CN is perpendicular to AB, we need to find the gradient of CN first, then we can find the equation of CN. Now we have the equation of AB, and after we find the equation of CN, we can solve simultaneously the equation of CN with the equation of AB to find the coordinates of the point of intersection of the two lines. Now from part one, the gradient of AB is equal to negative eight divided by four, which equals negative two. Now if you recall from part one, the distance from the origin to point A is 4 units, the distance from the origin to point B is 8 units. It's a fall, so it'll be a negative gradient. Using rise over run, that'll be negative 8 divided by 4, which gives us negative 2. 
Now CN is perpendicular to AB. So to find the gradient of CN, we take the negative reciprocal of negative two. And we can do that this way. Negative one divided by negative two gives us one over two. Now the point C lies on CN. And we know the coordinates of point C, which is seven comma four. So we have the gradient of CN. We have a point that lies on CN. So using the point gradient formula, we can find the equation of CN. So that's y minus four is equal to one over two times x minus seven. Multiplying the left-hand side by the denominator of two, the equation becomes two y minus eight equals x minus seven. And then collecting like terms and just rearranging the equation so that we have the pronumerals or the variables on the left-hand side and the constant on the right-hand side, we get x minus two y is equal to negative one. Now we need to solve simultaneously the equations 2x plus y equals eight, which is the equation of the line through AB, and x minus two y equals negative one. I'm going to use the substitution method to solve this pair of simultaneous equations. So I've labeled the equations one and two. So from equation number one, I'm gonna make y the subject. So y is equal to eight minus two x. And I'm gonna sub that for y in equation number two. So from equation number two, we have x minus two times eight minus two x in brackets. So that's where the y is here. So substituting out the y and in its place, putting eight minus two x, this is how we form the left-hand side of this equation. And that equals negative one. Expanding the brackets on the left-hand side, we get x minus 16 plus four x equals negative one. Collecting the like terms on the left-hand side and moving the negative 16 over to the right-hand side, so it becomes positive 16, negative one plus 16 gives us 15, and x plus four x gives us five x. So five x equals 15, hence x equals three. Now we can use either equations one or two to find the corresponding value of y. I'm gonna use equation number one. So two times three plus y equals eight, two times three is six, which means y equals two. Therefore, the coordinates of point N is three comma two.